Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight we're going to be talking about a Canadian whiskey? I don't think I do those on this channel, <laughs> at least not for a few years. So this is Lot 40 Dark Oak and this is one that's a little bit special to me. So first off this was sent to me by Chris Comartin, so thank you Chris, very much appreciate it. He sent it to me a little while ago because he's heard me talk poorly about Canadian whiskey for so long and I believe this came to him in maybe I want to say Texas, Austin somewhere and he shipped it over to me, so thank you very much. But let me talk a little bit about Canadian whiskey for just a moment. I have had bad luck with Canadian whiskey. I've had fine Canadian whiskeys, but there's always a flavor with Canadian whiskeys. <laughs> I promise I won't say it a hundred more times that I just don't love. And it's this, it's this weird flavor that you tend to get on the finish and it just stays there. And I don't love it, but one thing I do like about Canadian whiskey is the way it's made. So I won't go super into this because I, I want to do another video on Canadian whiskey and how it's made. But long story short, they can do a lot of weird stuff up there with mixing and combining and blending and doing whatever. Things don't necessarily have to be all made at the same time. They can be combined. So that's cool. And it offers a lot of opportunity. And I guess I'm a little disappointed that at least down here in the US, we don't get to see a lot of the cool stuff that they do up there. So overall, I haven't had a huge, like favorable opinion of Canadian whiskey, mostly because I don't think I've tried the best of it. So let's talk about the best one that I've had so far though. This is Lot 40 Dark Oak. And I will say this is made by a guy named Dr. Don Livermore. And he is the master blender at Lot 40 at the moment, among other things. And he is a prodigy. <laughs> I got to meet Dr. Don Livermore at this dinner and whiskey thing that was happening back in 2020. And yeah, I know not a whole lot was happening back in 2020, but it was cool. We did this whole thing. Um, I actually remember something about him. He has a great handshake. And of course he remembers everything there is to know about whiskey. So I asked him some stuff. I wasn't like trying to be like, oh, what was this is name every whiskey ever, you know, but like I had real questions and he just answered them off the top of his head. It was very impressive. So one thing that I remember from that night though, is that I first tried lot 40 that night. Now lot 40 was one that I had heard people rave about for years and it was like this is one of the best uh, Canadian whiskeys that you can buy and so when I tried it and it was okay you know it wasn't bad but it still had that like little taste that I don't love and just it wasn't stellar and that was disappointing. So then when Chris offered to send this to me I did say yes because of of course, you know, whiskey. <laughs> Thanks again, Chris. But also I wanted to give it another shot. And knowing that this was double oaked, basically, it's that's why it's dark oak. It's a double barrel kind of situation. I wanted to give it another shot. So here we are. Lot 40 was started in 1998 by a guy named Michael Booth. Now, Michael had this idea that he wanted to take a mash bill that his seventh generation forefather, Joshua Booth, must have been written down somewhere, came up with. And this is 95% unmalted rye and then 5% malted rye aged in used American oak barrels. And that's what Lot 40 was until 2012, from 1998 to 2012. However, then they changed to using uh, mostly new barrels for about a year. And then Dr. Don Livermore came on board and changed the game, right? So what he ended up doing is he changed, he's actually like legit a doctor, right? He has his doctorate in uh, distilling and brewing. So he's got a very cool doctorate <laughs> and the dude, whatever, I could, I don't have enough nice things to say about him. But anyway, he ended up changing this, figuring that it made more sense to not have any malted rye in there at all. So they went for 100% unmalted rye and then they ended up doing a number two char on a brand new American oak barrel. Now this is what the regular Lot 40 is. This dark oak ends up taking that whole thing, but then also finishing in a number four char American, brand new American oak barrel. Now this adds a lot more complexity. As you would imagine, it smooths it out being that much charcoal, but also just adds a lot of color too. I mean, this thing's dark. There is no age statement, but I can't imagine it's super old. But let's talk about the metrics. Most of this is what I just said. It's no age statement. It's 100% unmalted rye. It then spends time in American oak barrels that are number two char and then number four char. It is 48%, so that's a pretty good, it's probably one of my favorite percents. I do like a little north of 50, but I feel like 48 is a very good spot for a lot of whiskeys. Let me know what you think in the comments. What's your like preferred range? But it does not have any chill filtration, no color added, which Canadian whiskeys can totally add color. It's not a big deal. So to not see that is better, but also indicative of they are throwing it in this brand new charred barrel, like it doesn't need color added. And then the price is around $58. As for the nose, 
very heavy on honey for me. Uh, vanillins as well, but those are a little muted. You are absolutely getting cinnamon. Um, very woody. Uh, it is, it's not, when I'm smelling this, it is not quite like a heavy oak smell, but you can tell that there's almost this combination of like an earthiness with something almost reminiscent of fresh sawdust that is making me think wood. Also, the cloves that I often get in bourbon is coming up here. Um, there's also a hint of mint almost. There isn't as many herbally, uh, just kind of grassy notes as I would often get in a lot of rye. At least not on the nose to me. Maybe in the taste. Let's see. Cheers. The flavor on this is a bit complex. There's a lot going on here. So to start off with, you are getting some of those fresh grassy notes, but that is very quick. Then immediately it's caramel. But what I'm not tasting, and I couldn't be more happy about this, is that Canadian something I don't love about Canadian whiskeys. It's just not on the finish at all. What this tastes like, honestly, is like a high corn rye or even like a high rye bourbon, it's somewhere in the middle there. And that's going to be from the significant influence of the wood here. It, If you like bourbon, which I imagine most of you do, this is probably going to be one, I, I'll talk about this more in the overview, but this would be a fantastic transition from bourbon over to a Canadian rye. Uh, let's have another sip because I want to. What I'm not tasting here are any sort of fruits. Um, some of the notes I did run into during my research was a lot of people picked up apples on this. So if you are, then good for you. For me, I'm not. Uh, most of where this is sitting for me is that grassy note followed by almost like a mint leaf. There's caramel. There's a hint of vanilla. There's a ton of cinnamon. Um, some of the other things I'm getting, I mean, the wood is extremely drying on the tongue. You've got like the tannins going on there. It is, it is just good. Um, honestly, this is a very tasty drink. I think this, and I have tried it, but like I can tell you this is good with an ice cube. Um, this is better with a little bit of water. The ABV is not high enough to really want to dilute it much, but it opens up a little bit. It's more that for me, it accentuated the flavors I'm already tasting, uh, just kind of lightened them a little bit. But I think the ABV is kind of perfect here, so I wouldn't really touch this personally. Um, but let's go overall. The Lot 40 Dark Oak is a surprise. It's one of the better bottles that I've had recently, and that's saying a lot. Um, I've been leaning pretty heavily on scotch, I think, this year, but either way, like it's been due for a rye, especially long overdue for Canadian. I am happy that this was my re-entry into Canadian after so many years, because I simply avoided it. I even have a couple bottles of Canadian over there that I just haven't even opened, because I'm like, eh, I bought them, but they're probably not good, <laughs> which is a weird way to think. This is changing my mind. And if you guys can think of any other Canadian whiskeys I have to try, you should put them down in the description below, because I think I'm willing to, I'm willing to open up and let myself be heard again. <laughs> so as far as Lot 40 goes, the regular Lot 40, I might want to try it again before I make a bold claim like don't bother. But if you can find this one, I would be willing to bet that or say that this is the one to try. This one gets my rating of buy it all day long. Um, even at like the 55 to $60 range, I think this is one worth trying. What it's going to do, what this really did for me, honestly, is when I tried it, it was so refreshing. It reminded me of having whiskey for the first time, um, past the point where I actually liked it. <laughs> so it's, it's rare to have something like that happen. And it's only the, the best way I can even describe it. But I think you need to find your way into trying this one. Don't like overpay for shipping or anything like that. But if you can find this bottle locally or whatever, try it. From what I understand, it should be making itself a little bit more available in the US in the upcoming years and months or whatever. But it will probably still be hard to find unless you live in a larger city. Either way, definitely gets my rating of buy it. If you guys have been enjoying these videos, make sure you subscribe and hit like. And other than that, say thanks to my patrons because they're the ones that help me afford all of this stuff. <laughs> and thank you guys all for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Cheers.